Good morning guys and welcome to the show. Today we're at Knowledge Fest 2021. Look at this car. This is a Challenger. You guys have seen this. This is an XLR. That can only mean one thing. Arc Audio. We have our buddy Brian here and we're going to check out two cars. And I know what you're thinking. Wait, there's two there. We're going to see the XLR again? No, we're not. We're actually going to go outside where they have a pickup truck and we're going to check it out. We're going to listen to it. He's going to tell us all about it. One of the things, well, you know what? I'm not going to tell you about it. I know I say that when we start these things, but they have a new subwoofer shallow mount that is in there. I'm, I guess I'm gonna tell you about it. We get to go hear it. When we're done listening to that, we're gonna come back in and we're gonna hear this. Now I'm considering myself a pretty lucky guy being able to hear these cars. And this is Fernando's dream car and he doesn't get to listen to it. So I feel kind of bad. Hey, you know what? He's off doing something else, making great content for you. Let's hook up with Brian. Let's get out there in this Florida heat and humidity and listen to this bad boy. Hi. You ready? I'm ready. So it has these new woofers in it? Yes, the A10 and A12. This has the A12 the truck has. This woofer, we're gonna let it speak for itself. Oh my gosh, that look, and, and man. It, and, it, and it may yell. It may yeah, yell? It may yell. Yeah. But it may be a total, well it's arc, well, so it you won't know, be a total. Well, you never know. I yeah. mean, I guess there's always that possibility. There's always that possibility. Did you build this truck? I did. There's no possibility. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank yeah, you I was say. Well, I'm hey. blushing. I'm crying now. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah He's crying. got something in his eye. He's having a really hard time. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to be crying on your right. show, man. I'm sorry. What is this? Uh, this is this. the block of champions, and this is the trophy for Maggie Land. As you remember last year, in 19, not last year because we lost a whole year, but in 19, we won uh, Maggie Land. That's some of the best cars in the United States. Now we have two years in a row. And if you look at the uh, champions here, there are some, well, Can I really do Legends, Mark Eldridge, who's you know probably the greatest of all times, if not, uh, he's definitely on the list. Matt Thomas, who works at Mobile Toys, Steve Head, who's been around forever, and again another one of those could be the best of all time. Nick Wingate, definitely. Who's that guy? <laughs> well, you know, very good friend. Of That's him right there. Howdy. Thank How's you. everybody? And then, <laughs> my humble self, two years in a row, which is a, to me is a big accomplishment. Anytime you can back up your win again next year. Two-time champion. is a success. Uh, but I still have to get um, a few more match marks, so I'm, I have to be humble because and I'm way behind him still. Ready to go outside? I'm ready to go. Let's do this. Yep. So to start with, we're gonna take a look at this box. This enclosure, like all things Brian, is a work of art. I saw this on Instagram and I immediately thought this was one of the coolest subwoofer enclosures I've ever seen. I love the fact that it used the circuit board design underneath it. So this has got the uh, new A12s in there. Really like about one cubic foot of airspace. Underneath the seat of a truck, there's usually not that much airspace. My goal was to see what it would do performance wise in less airspace than performance. In order to get the woofers up off floor, we made the aluminum trim rings so we could inset into the floor and not lose any space, maximizing the space underneath. We also needed a brace in there, and most people do vertical braces. We did a brace across the whole thing and integrated the logo, which lights up, and then the wires for the LEDs go underneath and out the back side of the box. We could just assume anything that you're going to do is gonna have LED lighting in it. Correct. So it's, it's okay, we knew that as soon as we saw the Plexi. Full billet Arc Audio logo, hand painted and polished. There's these small detail marks like the Allen bolts on the woofers. We incorporate that into the bolting down of the ring and how the ring is bolted into the subwoofer box itself. Circuit board logo is actually the circuit board from the PS850 is what we use to power this. So this is powered off of just the one PS850? Correct. And that amplifier is very, very, very small. And it's deceiving because it has a, a lot of power. The amplifier is actually mounted in the center console of the truck. Can we see it? I guess we could see it. Let's take a look. That's it, huh? That's it. Now, we've taken out all the storage compartments because I normally store a lot of stuff for my travel. You have all of your storage in here. It takes up almost zero space in the car. And you have full amplification with full PSA Pro DSP. There's no wiring. Well, if you could see the wiring, it'd have to have LEDs in it. The wiring's too small to do that with. <laughs> 
iron is, is tucked out the bottom. The factory amplifier for the Bose system on uh, the older trucks is right there. Yes. The newer trucks it's in the back, but there's a big void there. So we just took out the little bottom piece that's in the center console and ran the wires out there with a new bottom plate. Maximizes everything. There's no chances of wires getting hit while you're storing anything in the compartment. Unless you spill a soda on it and it fills up the whole compartment, that's the only way it's going to be damaged now. If you're doing that, I mean, really? Yeah. If you do that, use sweet tea. <laughs> We're in the south. We're in the you south. Have to use sweet tea. <laughs> and what is this all being powered off of? We're using the uh, Stinger Height 10 in the factory flush mount kit. It gives it a bigger screen than what was there. This is a LTZ truck, so it had the big 8 inch screen to start with, but now we have a full 10 inch screen using the digital out. It's one of the few radios that has toss link out now. Going into the processor, all digital from the head unit to the processor and basically into the amp at that point. It's a full digital signal all the way through. What do we have oh. in the dash? Uh, so this is using a uh, RS two-way, which is you know kind of out of my normal thing. I usually use a three-way, but this truck's my pull truck for the trailer, and I didn't want to have pillars. I need to be able to see out the the windows as much as possible. But I wanted to see what this thing would do, and it's actually been very very surprising. So you're we, slumming it with a set of two ways? Well, you know I am, but I may start going to two ways in trucks. Really? This had the factory two and a half in the dash, and we made a laser cut plate and put the RS tweeter up in the dash and mounted that in. It has a slight angle to it, which works very well where the factory six by nine did the rs six and a half in the door all factory locations factory look the whole front of the car other than the the radio which still kind of looks factory it looks very factory so, so let's talk about the rs speakers is it a soft or hard dome tweeter soft dome tweeter 1.25 uh, inch tweeter it's a little bit bigger than what you normally get on a standard two-way but there's plenty of room in that dash so. oh yeah plenty of room it has a uh, tune chamber behind the tweeter so it's a little bit deeper but that gives you much better sound more clarity more detail and then the six and a half RS in the door is made to work in a full enclosure size of a door. So if you try to put that in a small pod, it wouldn't work very well. It's made for that big area. It performs amazing. We laugh because it has the juicer and I think we talked about that on the other video. It actually helps with the cone breakup. Just putting them in almost always gives you more depth, which is kind of a, an odd thing to get out of a speaker, but it's just one of the cool features that you get out of the sound out of it. RS, baby. RS. RS for life. What kind of sound treatment did you end up doing? Always do sound treatment on the doors for sure. I use Dynamat exclusively. They've been around for a long time. I get repeatable results with it. Did you do just, any obscene amount of Dynamat or was it just an average amount of Dynamat? Um, on this truck, I did an average amount of Dynamat. I really didn't go crazy like I do normally just because it's a regular truck. And I really wasn't expecting the performance that I got out of this whole system. You never know until you, you build one. And that's what this was is a, I'm going to go to a show and I need something to listen to on the way. Did you do anything for the sound treatment up at the factory tweeter dash location? Nothing at all. All in all, this is probably the most basic system. This is a basic Brian system. This is a basic system. This isn't even a basic Brian system. This is a basic system. I will give you that. I will give you that for right? sure. I mean, this is something that pretty much anyone could knock out. A set of the RS, six and a half components in the front, PS850 in the center console, compact, two 12 inch subwoofers, sealed underneath the rear seat, down firing. One of the sexiest, that's the Brian piece right there. That's one of the sex, that is the sexiest box. He's gonna give it to me. He's gonna give it to me. I'm gonna hang it on the wall. He's not going to give it to me, but I would. I may, I may give it to him because I'm gonna do a new box with Frenchies on it. Anybody that knows me knows I'm, you know. He's got a dog. My it's Frenchie, so my Frenchie dog. What's the Instagram page? The Frenchie Chewbacca. Follow it on Instagram. Yeah. You'll see what we mean. He's, he's adorable. Yeah. Let's take a listen to this and see how it sounds. Now naturally we're going to play some music that you guys are only going to get a brief moment of, and I apologize. We found some royalty free music with bass. about this it's giving me that mm, it's also just 
punch in the back. Punch in the back. It's punch in the back so hard. Those speakers have a three inch voice coil on them, don't they? They do. Shallow mount driver, big three inch voice coil. And you're just feeling that, that control. A lot of the times you do a shallow woofer like that, you get the big fat sound, but it doesn't do both. It doesn't give you that fulfillment of, uh, and uh, it's gonna be one or the other. And this is doing both really well. It's not compromising either. No, it, it's not. It's, it's almost like a regular woofer sound. Yes. Like a regular true woofer, but underneath the seat. Correct. Yeah, and you're sitting on top of it, yeah. which it's like, so we know, oh my gosh, okay. why I had the sly little smile on my face. Oh my gosh, dude. This is their new baby and they are, yeah, you know, he looked like he's a sly fox back going, I don't know, man, you gotta tell me what you think of these. I mean, you know, they're, I don't know. And I'm like, whatever. Combine those with these tweeters coming off the dash, these RS tweeters. And it's like, my God, man. Obviously we know he's a master when it comes to the DSP. This is just a farm truck. This is the princess hauler. Yep. And it's, it's just so damn impressive. I love a big silk tweeter. You guys know that. Oh my God, dude, these are impressive as hell. If you've never had the opportunity to hear the RS speakers, for one, what why not and two don't be afraid i mean honestly just i'm gonna make him happy go around and buy a set you're gonna love these things oh my god <laughs> they're spectacular what do you think john what i was gonna comment for a long hauler truck like this right is you have no listener fatigue this is something you could drive eight ten hours knock it out and you could jam the whole time yep. the whole time you're gonna jam whole the whole time you're not gonna think about the pain of driving eight to ten hours you're gonna think about the enjoyment you had listening to music eight to ten hours yeah yeah it worked really well well this has been impressive i love this but we're not done we have to go inside and now we have to listen to the challenger the challenger is a show winner this of course is the daily driver but inside that car got fourth place challenger got fourth place Robert fourth place Boyd's car. was this the first time he's competed with that no this is aggie land but it was his first out of state uh, big win fourth place out of 42 cars pretty dang good yeah. yeah let's head inside guys let's start at the trunk it's awesome looking this is also a little bit different. This isn't your car. That's not my car. So this is one of the first cars we've looked at that isn't your car, and you didn't build this car. I helped with a few things, but the majority of it was built by Robert in my shop. Robert Boyd started out, he was really good, came into my shop, he wanted to learn. He does industrial insulation, and he comes to my shop in the evenings, which most of the people know I'm there in the evenings, not during the day, because I work at ARC. And he has been amazing at picking up high-end techniques, very, very high-end techniques. So he's like your Fernando almost. Yes. Yeah. Except I'm the short one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at the trunk. This thing is awesome. Let's talk about the amplifiers. What are we running? A 1,206 to the right, 1,206 to the left, and a 2,500 to the three black 12s in the back. Definitely a different style than I normally do. Well, it's bass heavy. It, it was designed originally to be bass heavy, and now it's not. We've tuned it to what the judges would like. He's, he's competing in uh, Myaska and Mecca. Below that, we have a PS8 Pro, and then what looks like two more PS8 Pros. Two of the PS8 Pros are actually fused cover holders. I feel that is a total Brian move. That's something you would do. You take a simple, trivial thing like a fuse holder and right. go, we can make it better. We need symmetry, symmetry and balance. Symmetry and balance. But really, he's now thinking like me. That's spectacular. Don't oh, you yeah. love that? Don't oh, that I do. give you that proud feeling? Uh, th there's a couple other features in here that are amazing that he completely came up with on his own. He, he asked me some questions one evening and then came back and he says, how do you like this? And I went, oh my God. Oh my God, I love you. <laughs> The inside of the box, talked about bracing in subwoofer boxes before. The bracing on the inside of this box, uh, it was just a clear plexi back to it. What he did is the brace is actually his initials. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> Hard it's to see with shiny the... black. Yeah. yeah, that looks cool. It's located right here in the background. Yeah. It's very difficult to see, but yeah. But no, a super cool awesome. little feature. I did the uh, design work on the, the laser stuff on the outside here for the SRT and got the Arc Audio logo on the back so it looks like the, where the racing stripes would be for the car. It's a new style charger graphic with SRT and then little hexagons which match the hexagons in the factory panels. So there's a like a light black suede which matches some other pieces and then this is the color of some other panels that are on the inside. Of course detail stuff we have the, the little dip here which looks like some of the other things. This is a chamfer and then the stops there so it has a little bit of detail mark and then that transfers into here 
here. It matches the amplifiers. Yeah, that flows all the way through. So when you're looking at it, again, if you follow the details, they should all match all the way through. It's the little things. It's the little things. And then you can also see the wiring down here. All the wiring runs exactly parallel to everything else. I love the little details. Yeah. I mean, you've taught him very well. Your young Padawan is doing exceptional. <laughs> it's one of those things that those are subtle enough details that at first glance, it just looks the way it's supposed to. Correct. And you don't even think about it. Yeah. But then once someone points it out, it's like, no, no, this is like this for this reason. And then you sit there and go, oh. That's the biggest thing in the shop is we're always going if, and I say this all the time, if the car manufacturer was to build a big stereo system in the car, what little details would they probably carry through into that, into those panels, into that, into that stereo system? That's a pro tip right there, guys. If you're a, a wannabe or working to be fabricator, it does, that's it. That's what you got to keep in mind. Always yeah. be thinking that. This is cool. This looks nice. But where the rubber really meets the road is listening to it. Correct. Let's hop in the interior and take a look. But before we do that, we'll take a slow pan into the car and just check out the fabulous work in there. It just doesn't stop in the trunk. Yep. It goes all the way through. Yep. We use the kick panel area, put speakers down there. Generally, there were speakers in the doors, and one of the issues on a high-end SQ car is that the doors rattle depending on what frequency is being played. So this car had a, a challenge there. Challenge, challenger. <laughs> <laughs> Robert went home and, and he said, I, you know, I need to build uh, kick panels. He did a beautiful job of molding into the area that he had to work with a speaker location that is vented into the frame rail. A pillar goes down into this inside of the frame rail and it gets its airspace there because as we've talked before, they need lots of airspace for a mid base. He's using the frame rail as the enclosure for the woofer? Correct. That's a cool idea. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really good. It, it gets him that airspace that he needs and keeps the kick panel so they can be tucked way in there. And he's you'll not see... cutting out the corners of the floor to get more airspace. Correct. There's already an opening there and he just molded into that opening that goes into that area. We just had to block off um, the area where it goes up and goes into the dash because that's, you know, that's an issue. Pro tip. Pro tip. Pro tip big time. This car is trying to fit into a competition category. Some of the things are the way they are because that's the maximum that you can do in that category. And one of the things is the dash speakers. They are in the factory locations. There's an RS4 up in the dash in order to get that to do the best performance that it can have he went in there and he ground open the opening where the slots are because there's a much smaller speaker so they don't have the whole it looks like there's slots all the way across but they were closed up and then next to it you see the pillar as you can see it has this really beautiful flow to it yeah it almost acts like a horn yeah it's a wave guy it's sort of like um, in my car he put that tweeter so it's a little bit more on access but it matches the other side so it's the same on both sides so it's symmetrical and and in order to get this here is he cut all of this out and then the airbag still needs to work yes because this is still being driven taped up the airbag and then he laid glass all the way in this and then we shaped it afterwards with body filler so the airbag will still pop this off it's still got the safety device that holds that in place and it really is such a beautiful well at, i mean at first glance you look at this little detail and you think that was there from the factory and he just added on this little pod here at the bottom knowing the car like like we do it's like wait a minute no that that's a ton of work right there it is for me we're almost exclusively trying to use factory materials factory materials are thicker they handle the wear better but they are also harder to work with so. that's why a lot of the factory stuff is stitched unfortunately i'm not as good you're not at, betty ross i can sew but not sewing anything in a car poodle I'm... skirts i can sew poodle skirts <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back and talk about these kick panels for a minute. One of the things I see a lot is when people make these kick panels, I'm using my foot as a reference here, they come out far, but this this almost... Right, it's not very far at all. Grill itself, I got a little bit busy at the shop. We reached out to Meshman. He whipped out these grills for us. They're magneted and they do all the cool stuff that we would want to do. Put the logo in them for us. It was a very nice thing that he did for us. What I like about the grill is the RS, as you call it, orange juicer. Yep, That juicer. he put into the front of it because there's no mistaking that that is an ARC audio speaker. That's correct. Okay, so what makes it neat though is like when your eyes are up here, this looks 100% factory. Yep. Like you get in the car, you wouldn't even notice those if you didn't know to look for them. Right. But then when you do look down at them, it is clearly, oh, that's an arc. And it has the hexagon shape in it. The hexagon shape is this dash piece here. It has oh, hexagons yeah. in it. And it's a slight, subtle detail. And of course we have the book. The book for his car. That is awesome. So I did his book for him. So I still there. think you need to make those available for download or purchase. Um, so the box is red? The box is red. The box is red. The box is red on the front. And it's all birch and sanded and then cleared so you can see the grain of the box. You have to have a good book. You know, now this is becoming... You're a trendsetter. Uh, 
uh, so uh, so you know I'm I'm following other trends, but we try to take it to this level. Yeah. Now everybody's going to this level. Can we listen to it? We can. I beg your pardon, I'm not so here's the funny thing. We just heard the truck. Yes. Which is definitely not as complicated as this. Yes. I love this. It, not much of a difference. No. Right? Yes. And, and I know, but and that's gotta hurt you. Okay, well let me rephrase that because you're a three-way guy and you love three-way. One right. of the questions we get all the time is two-way versus three-way. Right. There's clearly a difference in this, and this sounds fabulous. Yeah. It's really in the subtleties. Correct, and that's that is the difference. Uh, almost everything that comes out of my shop has such a high standard from the tuning. DSP is the equalizer, the great equalizer we say. You can make everything get to a certain point. It's like racing. You want to get fast, but then the next little bit is a lot more work and the next little bit is a lot more work. It gets exponentially harder yeah. once you get to that To top get very point. minor detail differences. The goal is to have everything that we build as close as perfect as we can. We are in the back and we were talking about the subwoofers and I was like, wow, it's got all that bass and it's tuned for competition. Correct. And that is 100% apparent because as I'm sitting here and the song is playing and my toes are vibrating. Yes. And I'm like, at first I didn't pay any attention to it, but then I realized that I'm in this car with you, so I need to, it's almost like I need to have my senses on full alert yes. because it, it's, it's just gonna pop. It's gonna pop everywhere, yeah. and I need to be on my game, or I'm gonna miss something. And then it occurred to me as my my toes are like I feel like I'm getting tickled, yes. and I'm like you know with my toe shoes, so it makes with it super shoes. easy. Yeah. And I'm like, well, this is what he meant. And I know we have that big speaker down there, but that's deep sound yeah, that is doing that. That even even those aren't aren't gonna create that. Yeah. No, this is then this is will be the huge difference between the truck and this car. The truck is a party car. Yeah, the truck is a party and, car. And that's that upfront bass. We've talked about upfront bass and volume control and like I know you could probably turn this to be a party car at the flip of a hat and have these woofers and the sunroof doing this and yep. the panels vibrating. That wasn't the goal. You went with all that bass to get this awesome upfront bass correct. and blend well with those mid bass and the kick panel. That's correct. Yep. I got it right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I've been paying attention to him. Now, after this song, you will go, that's a lot of upfront bass. Let's do it. So here's the weird part about sitting in a car that is a little bit different than a daily driver as opposed to a competition car. I'll admit, it almost makes me feel lesser <laughs> of my capabilities because when you take high-end equipment, put it in a car, put it at this level, this is not something you get by chance it's not something that you can do with inexpensive equipment these rs speakers it's an awesome speaker and it's hard to express sitting in the elr sitting in this sitting in the truck we filmed the elr number one awesome two years in a row killing it we sat in the truck party long drives no ear fatigue we sit in this car up and coming star of future plaque name yes it's the same high quality RS speaker in all those vehicles. Correct. And we have, though the ELR and this are both striving for the same thing. I can't even get out what I'm trying to say, but it's it's like paying attention to it is what makes all that difference. Right. I mean, I know it must sound like I'm fanboying out a bit. I probably am. We had a guy come in the other day and he goes, this system just isn't giving me goosebumps. I was like, oh, I didn't do my job. I said, you know, let's get it back in the bay. Spend another couple hours on it. Retune it a bit. I said, stay in the shop. Don't go anywhere because I need you to sit in this car and make sure I'm on the right path. Because everyone likes stuff a little bit different. Played the old tune, him and Fernando were sitting in the front seat and they're like, yeah, you know, because they were thinking, oh yeah, and he was like, mm. hit the preset two. And I just see him go, oh. That's good. And I went back to one and I flipped between the two. This is almost like that same thing, but it's like all of these are the best presets possible. <laughs> I'm gonna say this, if you ever get the opportunity to go to a sound competition, a lot of those guys will let you sit in their cars and listen yeah. to them. Find the guy that did the best and sit in his car. And if they have these RS speakers in it, by all means, you wanna sit and listen to that guy's car. That's actually the common denominator between all three cars. Yes, and there's three totally different sounds. The amplifiers uh, are all different. The ELR has the ultra high-end SE amplifiers the truck has the all-in-one ps850 it's totally affordable and, and this one has the x2 amplifiers which are our entry level <laughs> yeah yeah which is uh you know misnomer but and that's why i like filming these as soon as we come and i find out brian has a different car to show off i'm always like ah can we film it 
<laughs> please because i want to share it with you guys though i would love to sit here and keep geeking out about this car i'm going to end it here for two reasons one i want to stop talking so i can start listening more yeah that's really the only reason and this is getting long <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Brian. Always. Arcaudio.com. Arcaudio.com. Check them out. Anything you're interested in, make sure you follow them over on Instagram at evil underscore ELR. Thank you. You guys have a great night as always. And as Fernando says, on to the next one. Bye. Bye.